All right, well, we have the game on the RX 6800 XT here. We're at 4K, currently the upscaling is off so we can get our baseline of performance. And in the settings here, I set everything pretty much maxed out. I set the ambient occlusion to ray traced performance. Man, the tooltips in this menu are gigantic and annoying. Anyway, and the sun shadows to ray trace. So this is 4K with ray tracing. And as you can see, there is a bit of a, uh, you know, we're a bit below 60 FPS, but the ray tracing in this game isn't incredibly demanding. You can play it like this, but man, 60 FPS would be a lot nicer. So why don't we take a look if the new FSR 2.0 can get the job done. So we're going to go over to upscaling, jump on down. I hate when you, when you click the button, it jumps back to the top of the menu again. Anyway, it's the FSR 1.0. Let's jump over to FSR 2.0 to the quality setting to begin with. Apply. Okay. We are now over 70 FPS. I'm sure it'll go down in certain scenes. But as far as in a standing still image here, this looks to my eye just as good as the native image. Now, moving around. Yeah, I think it looks great. So, you want some 4K with ray tracing? on your 6800 XT, looks like this is gonna help out. Now keep in mind that many games don't have as light of a ray tracing workload as this game does, um, but it certainly looks playable here, and it's nice to be able to use the FSR 2.0 in order to do it. Now, let's go ahead and compare uh, what would happen if we actually use this even more aggressively. What if we go down to balanced settings Okay, at the balance settings, I feel like there's a slightly increased loss of stability to some of the anti-aliasing around the expand your mind, but it's incredibly difficult to tell. In motion, things still seem pretty good. This is absolutely usable. Not just usable, this is, um, this is more than usable. This looks very, very good. I, uh, I played around with this game on my RTX 3080 using DLSS to kind of get some of a baseline of this, and it certainly has better ray tracing performance. Uh, I mean, that's, that's unquestioned. But as far as just the image quality we're getting out of the FSR 2.0 versus what you get out of DLSS, um, it's looking quite good. All right, switching down to the performance setting, once again, I see some loss of stability around the expand your mind, some loss of detail in some of the textures, and I can tell the, um, like looking up here at this railing, I certainly don't have as much fine detail on the individual bars, and they're slightly more shimmery. So the performance setting is absolutely noticeably not a native 4K image. However, it does look a lot better than trying to, you know, play the game at a low resolution on the 4K screen and just expand it normally. So I've got to go ahead and say that um, all three of these settings seem like they'd be usable in different situations. I think the performance setting here, I would probably leave for if I was running a GPU that's not really a 4K GPU, but I want to play on a 4K screen. <laughs> um, whereas with the uh, the quality setting, I think it was absolutely usable. Now, if we want to see a huge difference, let's look at the FSR 1.0 performance setting versus what we were just looking at with the 2.0. The expand your mind sign, like even the big edges are sometimes barely visible. There's almost no detail left in the railing up here at all. Uh, the whole screen, the textures and everything look to be a bit uh, fuzzed and smeared. So it's a, it's a very big difference. So the FSR 1.0 performance setting, I just really just wouldn't use. Whereas at the 2.0 performance setting, I think it's at least um, usable if in a pinch, I think is how I would consider that. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and turn off the upscaling for a second, or actually, why don't we try out uh, 1440p. Let's go to 1440p. So, 1440p. Uh, 
And this is currently with no upscaling. And again, it's just the maximum settings and uh, with ray tracing at performance instead of at the uh, highest quality. All right, well, there's our native image. Let's get a little run through here, get an idea of our performance. Seems to be bouncing around in the 80 to 90 range. So already pretty good performance at 1440p. But what could we do? Can we boost it? Is it worth it? Uh, upscaling, let's go to the FSR 2.0. And we don't need to be on the performance mode here. Let's go to quality. And we are now well over 100 FPS with these settings. Running up and down here. Instead of bouncing between the 80s and the 90s, looks like we're, bounce, we're, we're just maintaining well over 100 FPS. And again, this looks very close to the native image, although I feel like there's a bit of instability here. Like, does that... That look a little bit weirdly kind of shimmery. Is that does that happen in the native image? Let's go back to the native image here for a second and look at that and see if that's from the FSR or not. I guess it looks a bit unstable here at native as well. Although when I switch back to native, I think it uh, I think it got rid of my temporal anti-aliasing. Let's get that back on. Where is it? Here it is. I hate these menus. The tooltips are. Crazy. Well, I guess the instability is there even with just the normal native image uh, plus TAA. So that was not caused by the um, not caused by FSR. So there we go. Things are looking quite good. I'm actually curious. What if we kick up to a higher ray tracing setting at 1440p? What if we go up to ray traced quality setting for the uh, ambient occlusion. Okay. So we are at 90-ish FPS here. Going down this way, we're down yeah into the 80s. And let's kick on the FSR 2.0. So FSR 2.0 upscaling. I hate these menus. Have I said that enough? Okay, at the quality setting. All right, performance seems to be quite solid here. All right. Well, the other thing that I was kind of curious about testing was the adaptive resolution scaling. So uh, let's see it. So it'd be the FSR 2.0 mode. And then I think I'm going to go adaptive resolution. And so this says it dynamically decreases the render resolution of all the graphics screen wide. Uh, when the frame rate gets below a certain value. Now, adaptive resolution target, we can now um, set a target here. Now, can I change that? OK, so okay, it's wanting VSync based. Let's go manual, so we have control over it. And we'll go with a 120 FPS target. So let's just say I want to play this game at 120 FPS. Did I do something wrong? It does not seem to be 120 FPS. <laughs> uh, let's double check on that here. So we got the adaptive resolution manual, adaptive resolution mode. OK, so that's going to limit how far down it's willing to go. I see. So you're setting a minimum resolution for it to maintain. So if I go, if I, if I allow it to go down to performance, it's not saying it will go down to 50% of the screen resolution. It's saying I'm allowing it to, if it needs to, to try to hit 120 FPS. Looks like it's kind of overshooting our 120 FPS target here. Hmm. <laughs> and, at, at, and at this setting, look, as you kind of scroll past the expand your mind, you can see the temporal solution having a bit of an issue with the, uh, with the letters there. They kind of break up. A bit. Anyway, it can look reasonably OK, though. So hey, that was kind of fun to play around with. But overall, I think that compared to FSR 1.0, this is extremely usable. Um, I have questions about 
uh, exactly how this one's working. So if I set that to balanced, <laughs> maybe let's not let it go below balance. Now it just won't actually hit my 120 FPS target. But that's fine. Does this look a little bit better jumping back and forth there? It does it does to me. Anyway, all right, guys, uh, give you some final thoughts here at the end.